roshni ka karwa this podcast is brought to you by barrier break solutions private limited and score foundation Hi, my name is George Abraham, and welcome to yet another edition of uh, Highway Conversations. Uh, I have with me Shilpi Kapoor um, from Barrier Break. Hi, Shilpi. Welcome. Hi, George. And our guests uh, on this uh, episode are the creators of uh, the Global Accessibility Awareness Day. Yes, we have Joe Devon and Jenison Ascension with us. Welcome. Thank you so much. Thanks, George, for having us. So let's uh, begin by, um, you know, how did you guys get into the IT space? Wow. Unfortunately, this was a long time ago, which means that I'm old. But when I was 13, my parents gave me an Apple IIe and I just started banging away at it. I uh, created like a little, almost like a Hebrew word processing app, sort of, but it was pretty crude. But uh, that was that was the first program that I wrote. Uh, and then I uh, kind of went away from that and I am very much an entrepreneur. So uh, I left that, was uh, doing some work in, uh, in Europe uh, using uh, CompuServe, which was around before uh, the web, of course, and had some similar components to it. Um, and then was hired by a, a search engine company that was around before AltaVista, let alone Google. And uh, after I left there, I became an early employee of a company called Predictive Systems. Uh, I, was an, I, I was probably like the 40th employee and we grew it to a few thousand and went public four years later. So that's my fun journey. And then, uh, then I wrote the, a blog post, which I'm sure we'll get into later and met Jenison, which uh, brought me into uh, the IT accessibility space. So uh, this is Jenison, similar to, to Joe, I'm gonna betray my age a little bit or expose it. I was, uh, so I was, I, I became uh, blind when I was about a year and a half old. And so my first exposure to computers though, did not have screen readers or, or anything like that. I was um, using a, a Commodore 64 and, and, and creating uh, basic program uh, programs in basic uh, and had uh, family members at the screen screen reading software if you will uh, I always found computers interesting to me uh, unfortunately math was never my strong suit uh, and so I wasn't you know, despite me trying a couple of times uh, both at the college level at the university level uh, spending time in computer science that wasn't going to be the the route I would choose uh, or end up going in and becoming a computer science, like a software engineer. Um, but I, I just found my way into tech and wor started working in the accessibility space uh, full time in uh, 2006. Joe, um, how did you get interested in accessibility? Because uh, I don't think you have a vision impairment, right? Well, you know, I'm I'm above 50. <laughs> I'm 53. So I don't see the way I used to, that's for sure, but, uh, but I don't have uh, a too serious visual impairment. Um, and I didn't when, when uh, GAD started, but what happened was my dad was getting older. And so he had age-related issues with vision as well as um, with hearing. And um, he, he struggled to do online banking. And I was, uh, at the time, a web developer for AmericanIdol.com. Uh, and um, yeah, as a developer, it just felt wrong that uh, the bank was inaccessible. I, I just felt like, you know, to make my dad uh, independent, um, it's something that, that the web should have solved. And the fact that it was inaccessible uh, really, really upset me. So um, yeah, so that's where I kind of got interested in accessibility. I'd heard of it before. Um, one big introduction was Victor Tsaran, um, who was working at Yahoo at the time. He was a technical program manager, and he displayed a screen reader, like how, how, he, how he uses the homepage of Yahoo through a screen reader, and it just kind of blew me away. So it was 
as a developer fascinated by the assistive technology and also as the son of someone that needed to access the web accessibly and couldn't. I have, I have a interesting story, even though that I'm completely blind myself and, and, and was a benefactor of early like a uh, braille uh, a computer with a braille display and all that kind of stuff i also was touched by the importance of technology uh it, i just graduated from high school and went to a program that was run by the cnib the canadian national institute for the blind uh called the score program where they brought uh was it 24 blind and visually impaired youth from across Canada together, uh, many of whom had never touched uh, a screen reader before or screen magnification software. And I spent a lot of time during that uh, program just observing other people. And I witnessed firsthand the impact uh, it having technology with assistive technology had on people. Uh, uh, youth my age and who might have never had this before and it had such a profound impact on me that I, I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do with it but I knew that there was a power in putting technology in the hands of, of, of people at the time who were blind and visually impaired and I later expanded that to people with different disabilities when I got to college and got exposed to people with other disabilities and impairments more broadly um, so I know that might sound I, I don't know, but it, to me, like, I, I also had my own awakening because I, here I was using the technology for me and I knew it impacted me, but, but to, 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 to witness it having such a profound impact on people, the number of whom had never had that access before really planted the early seed. And again, I wasn't sure what I was going to do with it, but I knew I wanted to work in technology uh, uh, in this way at some point. So, uh, Joe, you wrote a blog to start this whole, to express yourself and your uh, concern, and boom, magic happened and it became a global movement. How did that happen? Gosh, I mean, you just write a blog post and then, and then you get a viral <laughs> movement, isn't it, like, so easy? <laughs> um, I'd say a lot of it was luck. Um, much, of, much of the luck was just the fact that Jenison happened to read it. Had he not read it? this would have never gone anywhere. And um, I'd say, I'd say I wrote the blueprint of, of how to how to create uh, this awareness day successfully. It took me years, you know, I'm one of those people, it's like you write code and you look at it six months later, you're like, oh, this code is terrible. You wrote a letter a month ago or even a day ago and you're like, oh, what's wrong with me? Like I, I'm very self-critical of, of things. And, and it took me years to say, okay, I'm gonna look at the blog post again. And I was like, oh, this kind of holds up, which surprised me. Um, so if you read that that post, I think you'll see a lot of the elements that would have made it a success. But honestly, like Jenison uh, is a force of nature and um, connecting up with him is really was key to to making this happen. Um, both of us had a community. My community was more around the developer side of the world. Um, Jenison was more on the uh, accessibility side of the world, um, but he he wrote lots of people and said, hey, what are you doing for for uh, this new GAD idea we have? And uh, tons of people uh, just took him up on it. Including Shilpi. <laughs> we, we have to we have to acknowledge the fact that Shilpi was one of the people that I reached out to that in that first year. And I was like, hey, Shopee, uh, this guy, Joe Devin, and I, are, uh, who I just met, we're doing something. And, uh, and, and Shopee, certainly, uh, you, you were with us from the beginning. So I, I didn't want uh, this to go by without your listeners knowing that you had a, an early impact and an early contribution as well. Um, but uh, but it, it, was, it was one of those interesting times, too, because like Joe said, I was, I was busy trying to figure out ways to make accessibility more appetizing and palatable to the mainstream tech community. Uh, I, I like I, I had started to grow my own network of, uh, as Joe said, of, of people working in accessibility. But Joe's blog post was was the timing was perfect. And as he alluded to, like, I just happened to be home. And uh, on that Saturday, that fateful Saturday, and I was trolling Twitter and saw this, uh, what I later learned was an automated tweet 
uh, it wasn't even a tweet Joe wrote himself. It was just an automated tweet that sat out there and, and it just happened. Uh, they, I guess that's what they say. Sometimes the best uh, things that happen are the ones you don't expect. Well, Jenison, you know, uh, what both of you did when you all started off, I think is something that I love about the accessibility community. And sometimes I think it's getting lesser and lesser in the accessibility community, that togetherness, that oneness, that, you know, let's open the doors, let's bring in people. And I think that's why, you know, Barry Break supported it at the first point, because it was not about Joe or Jenison. It was about, can we get the word out there and, and can we make it happen and can we do this collectively? And your outreach is phenomenal. It has to be said for both of you that the kind of reach that you've achieved with GAD over the years, right, has been amazing. It's something I haven't seen uh, in our space, at least, for sure. It, it still surprises. I'll speak for myself, uh, but jo, but Joe and I certainly talk about this every year. It 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 boggles the mind to think that how much this has has taken off. And and at this point, Joe Joe and I really stand to the side, and uh, we we we've provided the platform, the GAD day itself, and uh, people have just run with it. So, Joe, what are you, you you you're still as surprised as I am, right? Oh, God, yes, 100% surprised. And and by the way, let me echo what you said about Shilpi. Shilpi, you're a part of this. You were in my very pr first presentation. I've given so many over the years. You're you're in all of them. I always talk about that first year. Uh, you had like a, you, you got an Indian governmental event. We reached India and not only India, but a governmental event. Uh, and, and that's thanks to you. So agree 100%. Uh, the community uh, did it. And I don't feel like the community has gotten less friendly um, or let's say less welcoming. I think it's just bigger. So, you know, maybe when things get bigger, it, um, it can impact the, the experiences. And then maybe one or two things might have happened that, that, um, that make you go, oh, darn. But in reality, like the same great people are there that we're always there. So the uh, question I'd like to have is, uh, you know, all these uh, movements, uh, there are people who say, yeah, this is a great idea and run along, but there are also people who are skeptical and who, who kind of uh, say, oh, what are you talking about accessibility? It's a lot more money. It's uh, how many people are going to use it. Uh, so uh, what has your journey been? Well, first I want to address what you just said. Um, the idea that uh, it's not going to be used and all of that. Uh, there are over a billion people with a disability. Um, the number of people with a disability is larger than the Chinese market that everyone is chasing. How about just going, just serving your own customers with disability? That's a fantastic, huge market. And the reality is our numbers are kind of skewed because disability is really a spectrum my vision when right now I don't consider it to be a visual impairment really I have clouds in my eyes but I don't consider it a visual impairment really um, or a disability I should say but uh, had I had this vision at five years old yeah everybody probably would have said it it is um, your hearing is not the same at all it's all in a spectrum and everybody is has different abilities some people might be a little better with the eyesight better with the hearing etc um, and if you develop accessibly, you just make your platform work better for people across the entire spectrum. So I, th I think that those numbers, it's great work that's been done by the WHO and the World Bank to come up with those numbers. And they acknowledge that it was a spectrum and that they needed to, to come up with a cutoff and say, okay, this is the degree um, of um, I don't. I don't even remember the exact verbiage they used, but at this point, we're going to call it a disability. And boom, there's your official statistic. But everybody benefits when you make your digital products accessible. There's definitely enough examples out there of of, of the quote unquote accessibility enhancements, improvements that 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 we we hear that Joe, Shilpi, George, and and myself, we all know. Uh, benefit everyone. Captions, uh, uh, the ability to scale fonts, uh, font sizes, uh, keyboard accessibility. Those are all things um, that, you know, have obvious benefits for people with, with quote unquote disabilities. 
but there's productivity reasons why some of those things are easier. There's uh, other reasons like th that make all of those things help everyone. Um, so the, the argument now around, uh, oh, this is just helping the, this, this small group, uh, that, that argument is being a lot harder to, uh, to defend uh, when, when we all know the benefits are out there for, for everyone. So I buy your point, but George and I live in a country which is India, mm -hmm. where uh, accessibility is really, George, can I say not in any, everybody's mind for sure? Yes. As much as it yes. is uh, in the West, um, maybe legislative, maybe other, you know, issues. Um, you know, and I've always wondered, do we need to change the term accessibility to something which is more inclusive? Um, and, you know, you all both created GAD. Has there ever been a thought that has come in that how do we widen that word? Because in India, when we talk about accessibility, very often people talk about reach of network, you know? Yes. Uh, I, I, well, I know even here in, 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 in the, as you use the term, the West, um, the term inclusive design is being used a lot more uh, more widely to include accessibility. It does, it does though sometimes become confusing because some people think of one or the other, but I certainly hear more use of the term inclusive design uh, as, as a way to bridge and to make it more broad. Uh, so I'm not sure if inclusive design is something that's yet become part of the nomenclature out in India yet, but that's certainly a term I hear a lot more often to, in, to include accessibility as part of that umbrella. If you know of anyone with vision impairment who needs guidance on living life with blindness, please share the IWA National Toll Free Helpline number 1-800-5320-469. The number is 1-800-5320-469. Yeah, I'd just like to throw in another dimension to this uh, conversation, which is that uh, in, in a country like India, words like accessibility and inclusion uh, has different interpretations. Yes. Uh, inclusion, for example, I've been to a conference where they talked about inclusive education and there was no inclusion of disability being spoken about. They were talking about gender inclusion, class inclusion, but no disability inclusion. We have the same uh, um, dilemma here in that th there's a big emphasis on something called what we call DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion, uh, or just equity and inclusion. And disability is seems to always be late to the table, uh, you know, race, uh, uh, LGBTQ um, is is brought up, gender, uh, and then disability. It's almost like we always have to we always always have to say and disability uh, is is being brought in. So it's similar to what you were mentioning about inclusion. Um, it, it's it's the same dilemma uh, some of us have seen out here, where the conversations around diversity, just diversity in general, they always forget disability, like it's some sort of separate thing. Meanwhile. Disability cuts across all of those dimensions. You've now completed more than 10 years of uh, this campaign, GAAD. Uh, so what are some of the exciting milestones that you've seen along the way? I think for me, uh, the move away from strictly talking about making bank websites and education uh, not, yeah making making kind of like the 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 kind of the dot coms accessible that was the primary focus maybe in the beginning but now we're we're seeing a lot more stuff around gaming that this is a huge thing um i was just having a conversation with someone about this earlier today you know it's it's so important and i don't want anyone to misunderstand that we need to make all the e-commerce websites and all of those things accessible. But people with disabilities also want to have fun and want to also feel socially included. So the fact that things like gaming are becoming is is so important to make accessible to me, I think is 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 amazing and interesting because 
uh, gaming is one of those things where uh, people with disabilities, you can almost, if you want to, uh, play a game without even exposing that you have a disability or impairment, so long as the game itself is accessible. Um, and and that, that, that goes a long way. Um, I'd say that's one of the big areas. Um, I'll, I'll hold off on my other area. That? Yeah, please. Yeah, um, and then keep going with yours. But uh, on, on GAD one year, a few years ago, uh, Microsoft released the Xbox Adaptive Controller. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, then the next Super Bowl, they did a big Super Bowl commercial where they had uh, four kids uh, who had various, uh, they had like um, missing limbs or, or, or that kind of thing. Um, and it was, it was just an incredible commercial that really um, allows you to understand what the importance is. Because I think a lot of people haven't been exposed to a lot of folks with disabilities. And when you see children that just they're not interested in anybody's pity. Um, they, you know, it, it, it's not about inspiration porn. Uh, it's really just about having the ability to play a game. And so you see the parents and you see the kids and you see what it meant to them that um, Microsoft went out there and they developed a controller that just allowed kids to play a game. Um, and, and when you're a developer or a designer, you're building digital products, it's like, okay, let's not exclude people with disabilities. So I'd say that was that was a big one. And it really goes along with what you're saying on gaming. And I mean, this year, even there was a it was actually some folks in India who uh, led a, a panel conversation around uh, dating in, in the digital age and accessibility around that. So, you know, we're, 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 we're seeing a lot more stuff that has to do with social inclusion outside of the the day-to-day -day work and the necessities of uh, the quote-unquote necessities of life like banking and, and access to government services all of that stuff again extraordinarily important but there's more to life than than just that and and the fact that that gad uh is is encompassing some of these other areas um I think is, is, is great. And I'll add, you know, in a way, I kind of hate to only focus on the big tech because they get they get plenty of, of mention already on the media. But I think it's important the, the the big tech companies have all embraced accessibility. And the reason I think it's important and so have tons of small companies. But I just highlight this because in a lot of ways, big tech leads the way. And if all of them are saying that accessibility is important, it trickles down and eventually reaches the the developer designer you know the digital product creators it reaches that community because a lot of them are trying to get jobs in big tech and if they know that they can't escape uh, accessibility when it comes to learning their their craft uh, it's going to change the game because that's what we really need everybody that creates a digital product needs to be aware of it learn it and uh, that that's that's the aim of GAD right so I would say that, that that's another big one that we keep seeing on, on Global Accessibility Awareness Day, the big tech um, uh, in embracing this, this day and accessibility in general. The last thing I'll say about this in terms of trends, uh, which I, is also exciting to me, is the G in global means that this, these conversations need to happen uh, not only in English, and we are seeing a lot more events and just a lot more content that's 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 coming out in other languages, which which is as it should be. Uh, we we, you know, in, in particularly here in the in, again in the in the West, if you will, or or, or here in, in in the states, uh, you know, English, 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 and we see a lot of that stuff. But I I always get a kick out of learning that there's there's like a webinar or a discussion that's happening in a not, in in another language because uh, accessibility and disability that that transcends uh, everyone so that really lends itself to the the g in the global part of, of the discussion to support our work with the blind and visually impaired you can visit the donate page on our website www dot scorefoundation dot org dot in please note www dot scorefoundation dot org dot in you 
you've also started something called the GAD Foundation. Uh, if we weren't busy bit. enough already, right? <laughs> <laughs> so what exactly does this foundation do? Why did you set it up? And uh, what's the scope? Sure. Um, I'll, I'll take a first crack at this one. Um, and, and to say that we, we've heard over the years that GAD, you know, it's just a day and there needs to be more momentum and all of that. And this is something Joe and I had been talking about doing something that, that would broaden the scope of GAD further further out. Um, so, so the idea of a foundation is something that Joe and I had been talking about for a couple of years or a number of years. And the 10th anniversary just felt like the right time to do it. But, but, but the mission of, of the GAD Foundation itself is, is basically we want to disrupt um, the, the tech you culture. To, you want me to no, no, no. give the official we don't have, well, <laughs> you know, I don't know if we have to be so official about it, but the reality is what, what, what we're trying to do is disrupt the, the tech culture in such a way that it includes accessibility within uh, the development of technology and digital products. So it's all about disrupting what's there today. We acknowledge that there's a, a current tech culture that doesn't embrace and that doesn't often see accessibility as important. And we're here to disrupt it uh, in all kinds of different ways um, to make it so that people have accessibility at top of mind. Uh, Joe, did you want to add more? Yeah, uh, it's it's a hundred percent the case, and I, I even put this in my signature for the last few years. Um, and and it's probably not that pithy, but to, to to developers, it makes a lot of sense. The agile methodology has has um, been something that changed software development, and I really just want to copy what they've done and change the culture of software development to include accessibility. So, you know, somehow this group of people came up with the idea of a methodology for, for software development that's better than the last methodology that was popular and everybody took it up. So why can't they take up accessibility and just become ubiquitous in software development? So that's, that's really the goal here. And um, we have lots of ideas around how to make that happen. Yeah, I'm wondering, Joe, if, if, if you wanted to talk briefly about the GAD pledge, uh, like in addition to sure. GAD. So GAD is now part of the, the work of the foundation. Uh, but there's something that, that uh, Joe really, the brainchild of uh, Joe's last year, the GAD pledge, which would be a good example of another program under the foundation. Yeah, so we look at open source projects that, um, that really have a large impact on websites downstream. So there's uh, something called WebAIM, they, they, um, the folks that make the Wave tool, they came up with a yearly report where they look at the top million websites and see how accessible they are according to their uh, automated tool. And in there, they look at which frameworks, open source frameworks, um, the website used and they kind of provide an idea of, hey, um, these particular frameworks, if you use them, it correlates to you know less accessible um, website, and that kind of gave me that idea to hey, why not take these open source projects and try and see if they're willing to take the GAD pledge to make their project um, more access or sorry to make accessibility a core value of their project. Um, commit to what level of WCAG level they will support. Um, provide accessibility coding guidelines and to prioritize fixing accessibility bugs. And Joe, yeah. just just really quickly for the non techies who might be Sorry. listening, Sorry. When, when you're talking about uh, frameworks and project, these just just add to simplify it a little bit. There are thing there there are these uh, popular code libraries and and basically they they have uh, widgets or controls that are used like checkboxes as an example or things like that and these open source projects create th these these things these widgets and and what joe is talking about is making sure that these widgets are accessible out of the box so that if anyone decides to adopt a particular framework they can at least be guaranteed as long as they don't um like alter these widgets um that they there will be a, a, at least an initial layer of accessibility. It will not guarantee the thing is completely accessible, 
uh, but it, that's that's a start, and it's it's so important because a lot of companies and a lot of organizations use these uh, these large fr these frameworks to create their sites because they don't want to have to they don't want to have to create their own widgets and stuff like that. I just yeah. wanted to like no no thank you that technify it exactly. Uh, sorry about that to the audience, um, and you know it 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 was great because right from the get go uh, Facebook. Uh, committed to take the GAD pledge for their React Native project, which is very, uh, how should I say it, is very influential in the industry. And for mobile apps. To, yeah, yeah to, it, it allows you to make mobile apps cross-platform. So if you're iOS or, or Android um, or web, it kind of helps you do it in all, all in one code base. So it is used by lots and lots of people. It's very influential. And there were some core issues with their accessibility. So Facebook committed to putting in um, putting in resources to make it more accessible, and that was a, a really big win. Uh, and Jenison, I'll let you mention the yeah the next this year. Yeah, so so uh, Facebook and the React Native uh, framework or project took the GAD pledge last year, and this year uh, the Ember JavaScript uh, framework. Uh, took the GAD pledge as well. So we'll be working, Ember had already been working on accessibility previously, but they wanted to make a public statement and a public commitment and to demonstrate that they that this is something that mattered. So they, they've since taken the GAD pledge this year and, uh, and we certainly have plans. There's other frameworks out there and I know Joe has, has them all in mind um, uh, to, to get them, um, kind of inspired to, to follow suit. Uh, you guys sounds like the right way forward from an accessibility perspective. I think we've been waiting for something like this. So again, congratulations. Another brilliant idea from the two of you. Well, um, uh, I don't know what the time in the US is right now, but um, uh, it could be pretty late in the evening. And uh, we appreciate the fact that Joe and uh, Jenison, the two of you, agreed to speak with us and spend this time with us talking about GAD and uh, the way GAD has kind of grown over the years. Uh, I'd like to formally congratulate you on the completion of a decade and you're on your second decade now and uh, more power to you guys. And thank you very much for being part of our IWA conversation. Thank you so much. And if people want to learn more about the foundation, they can go to GAD, G-A-A-D, dot foundation. Thank you for everything you'll do. Bye. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. This podcast was brought to you by Barrier Break Solutions Private Limited and SCORE Foundation. Shanika.